Hey, it's Graydon here with Forever Booked. Forever Booked is a marketing company that empowers medical spas to bring their marketing in-house and get better results than they ever have before using the power of AI and other tools and strategies that we provide for them. And recently, earlier this week, I hosted a masterclass for my community of medical spa owners in my program. We had on one of our top performing clients, Nathan Strom. Nathan owns a medical spa out in Ottawa, Ontario called Refined Image Ottawa. And he is an absolute beast with sales. He's getting incredible results with our system. And he also owns a consultancy that helps medical spas uh, get better at their sales and just get better at their operations, get better at running their entire business. So this is a masterclass for my private community, but I wanted to open it up to the public because some really valuable nuggets in here. If you're subscribed to my email list or following me on YouTube or just found this video uh, through search, uh, and you're a medical spa owner looking to get better results with your marketing, this is really gonna help you. So lots of great information on how to structure offers to bring in clients, how to follow up with leads, how to book leads, how to perform consultations, sell packages, and also how to get really good results for patients as well. So uh, I appreciate you tuning in and enjoy. So today I have Nathan Strom on the call. He's the uh, co-founder of Refined Image Ottawa. He's also a um, <clears throat> co-founder of a consulting company called Revenue Doctors, where he helps med spas with their sales. And Nathan signed up about, um, it was like, it was before the summer in the spring, a couple months ago, and he's absolutely crushing it with Forever Book. He's getting really uh, amazing results. He's getting over a 10x return on his ad spend. And he's just like implementing the system really well. So he agreed to come on here and do a masterclass for all you guys to share the, you know, the top, um, Top secrets, he's implementing to get really good results with Book. So super excited to have you on, Nathan. Thanks for hopping on and let's uh let's get started. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Graydon. Can everyone hear me? Like just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. I can see some awesome. Yeah. So people can hear oh, me. One in the chat. Okay. So um I, I normally I normally prefer presenting on stage. I find this online stuff a little bit harder, but um I'm a very needy presenter. So if anyone has questions, just feel free to throw them out i think um it's awesome that we get the opportunity as clinic owners to like collaborate on a call like this and um i'm learning just like all of you like this this world is so innovative it's so forever changing um and i'm just lucky that i've found the forever book platform so i want to thank them one for convincing me to to jump on this platform because it's really helped my business and i can I can see us doing some even greater things in the future on this platform, but also for thank forever book for creating a community of like bringing us clinic owners together, because I'm not a big fan of competition. I'm a big fan of collaboration. I think if we all work together to grow this industry, we're all going to benefit from it. So let's get going. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, who I am and what I do. So um as Graydon said, I sort of wear two hats. I'm a consultant in the industry and I'm also a clinic owner. So this is my business partner here in the photo with me, George Scandalis. He's not also known as the skin guy. He also is known as a global educator around the world and he does a lot of advanced uh, trainings on a specific device for a company that we partner with. Um, obviously, this is myself. So we work in clinics um, anywhere from helping clinics get the patients in the door through how do we make the patient experience or the patient journey a very pleasant one. So in return, we're getting the patients to come back. So we work with patient, uh, clinics all over North America on how to create a better experience uh, for their patients and bring more patients in the door. So we use Forever Booked as a platform with a lot of our clients, and we're going to continue to use the Forever Booked uh, platform as much as possible. A little bit about myself, um, I am a, a, a lucky and very uh, proud father and of three beautiful uh -huh. young girls. Uh -huh. um, okay. You can see in the middle there, um, my three girls, seven, four, and two, Isa, Alexi, and Charlie, um, and my wife, Susanna. Um, that was a picture of us at the Dominican uh, earlier this summer, and you can see that I'm wearing lots of sunscreen, so I, I like to look after my skin while I'm in the sun. Um, and these are really my three happy places. I have on one side myself on stage educating in the industry. I love educating. Uh, 
myself in the middle with my family and my girls. And then obviously on the other photo, I'm actually operating one of my favorite devices, which is the PicoSecond technology from Sinusure, the PicoSure Pro. Um, that's me and my clinic operating the laser. Um, and that is my favorite laser of all time because it gets great results, but also it attacks um, what patients come into a clinic for. 80% of patients these days are coming in for anti-aging and pigmentation. And that device capitalizes on all of that in one treatment. A little bit about my clinic. So you can get a sort of a sense that I am one of you. I'm one of you business owners that's struggling on an everyday basis to keep the, keep the lights on, pay the bills, pay my staff. And also at the end of the month, have a salary there or a bit of money there for myself as well. So um, this is my team here. They're not all full-time. So the full-time members of myself and Sandra, my, my business partner, um, Maddie uh, is our senior nurse, and we have Alina, our senior uh, esthetician. Um, we have our three admin staff, Jade, Shanna, and Jasmine, that are part-time. And all the other people in this photo are part-time nurses that we pay on a contract basis where they come in and treat their their patients and we pay them contracting rates to do that. Um, the clinic itself has been in operation for th three, almost four years now. I brought into the clinic at the start of this year. Last year, the clinic did $400,000 in revenue. We've grown the clinic to almost 1.1 mil in revenue this year. We're hoping to finish the um, year in 1.1 mil in revenue. Um, and we're about close to that 2000 mark when it comes to patients. So we're about the 1850 mark last time I looked. I'm hoping to get us up to 2000 by the end of the um, year. We've had uh, 182 customers come in in the last 90 days. And that's been a result of Google ads, social media referrals, and obviously the Forever Book platform. And just to give you an indication of where we are from a purchasing point of view, our average patient is spending around $385 per transaction. That's a little bit lower than I'd like it to be, but we do offer some soft aesthetics like facials and uh, eyelash and tints, which I think is bringing that dollar value down. But that's a really important KPI I encourage all of you Medispa owners to look at. The whole idea of growing your business is not necessarily acquiring new patients. It's working with the patients that you have. And a really good key performance indicator is that average purchase, purchase per patient. If you can get that up, you can grow your, your revenue without actually growing your patient database. So let's talk a little bit about forever book success. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my case study, what's happened in the last 75 days well, sorry, the first 75 days I was on Forever Booked. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I think we did well with the Forever Booked platform. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, things that I'm maybe going to do in the future to get some more success with Forever Booked. So the first 75 days, um, I started off with a $300 promotion. Um, and I slowly, towards the back end of it, I brought in a $1,200 promotion. Over those first 75 days, um, the Forever Book platform was able to uncover 150 opportunities for me. And what I mean by opportunities, that's 150 people that bought, took a bite at that online form. They, they saw my ad, they signed up to the online form, and I brought them into the Forever Book database. Out of those 150 opportunities, I closed 82 of them. Um, as in 82 have come in and purchased, and I still have 19 booked. So we've done around $43,000 worth Listen of sales. To this. But, if, but if I average that out for the 19 that are booked, I still have another close to $10,000 that are about to come in um, to purchase treatments in my clinic. So if we look at my overall sales over those first 75 days, I'm looking at around $53,000 worth of sales. And my total ad spend throughout those 75 days was between the $30 and $60 mark. I sort of tinkered around with it, changed it a little. I started with 30 days and with the help from Anna and her convincing. Uh, and, sorry? Is someone asking a question? No? Okay. And so from the total ad spend, I spent around $4,000. So I'm very, very happy with my um, 
my return on investment so far. Um, and where I think we've been successful is in the in the following areas, and I'm going to go through of them. Um, I think it's really important that we understand the market we're in. We understand the opportunity. Um, we have to really think about the promotions we're offering, and we're going to talk about that today. The biggest thing for me is the speed of your response, and I'm going to talk about some data and statistics around how important it is to respond in a timely manner. And then once you've done the hard part and you've got the patient in the in the door, it's all about the patient journey and how do we make that patient journey extra special for that patient? Um, and then also, how do we build a menu and pricing around it? So when that patient comes in the door for that introductory offer, they're also buying something else or they're committing to something else that day and leaving with more appointments booked. So we're turning that patient not just into a one-time patient, we're turning that patient into a patient for life. And then talking us through the consult process. What can we do in that consult process using the patient journey and using our menu and pricing? What are some things we can change in that consulting process to make sure that we're, we're closing more of our consults? Because I believe in this industry, the consult room is the most important room in the clinic. Um, and they're the most important person in the clinic because they're not just closing the sale, but they're also setting the patient up for success on the patient journey. So let's get going. Any questions while we're here? We're all good? Okay, I'll keep going. If anyone wants to interrupt, just yell out or raise your hand. So let's yeah, have guys, a if you have question. Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt, Nathan. You guys, if you have questions, just uh, probably the easiest way is to post it in the chat and then I can, uh, and then I can ask Nathan or you can see it in the chat too, Nathan. Yeah, so I think this is a really good stat to look at the global market size in aesthetic medicine. Um, and this is in US dollars because this gives us an indication on how things are trending globally in our market and where we want to be. So like in 2022, the, the market closed at around $112 billion. And 2030, it's expected to be around that $330 billion mark. So it's pretty impressive. We're looking at a 14 and a half percent growth year over year um, and it really just shows that this market is booming and even though people right now are talking about you know maybe a global economic crisis mortgage rates and interest rates going high people not having maybe the same disposable income as they had in the last three to five years before COVID I think we have to understand that our market is booming and another huge indicator of this is private equity Private equity are very, very smart people and they invest their money where they think they can get the best return. And private equity right now is all over our industry. They're gobbling up clinics left, right and center. They know that this industry is where the money is and they want to they want to be in this industry. So we have a huge opportunity ahead of us. The other thing we need to look at from this is if we're not growing at 14.5% each year as a clinic, we're not hitting the global average so i think if we're not growing at 14 and a half percent we really need to look at what we're doing and we need to make as many changes as we can to try and grow at that average and remember this data is changing all the time so it's always good to look on certain websites and find out where your clinic's sort of sitting from a growth point of view the other way we can look at this is if you don't like looking at dollars and and money and you find it hard to look at it from that point of view is Studies are showing that eight out of 10 people are either in our clinics getting treatments or they're thinking about getting treatments. So 80% of the population, the adult population out there is interested in being a customer or a patient in your clinic. This is huge. Like there's not many industries that could say that they have this much potential to, to grab patients. And I was just talking to my wife the other day, we went to a conference in Montreal, uh, Canada, and we went to the Four Seasons in Montreal, which is a very, very expensive hotel. And this hotel was absolutely jam-packed. And it's telling me that people have disposable income. People are traveling. People are partying. People are still spending a lot of money. And every single person in that hotel looked a million dollars and dr drove a really nice car. So I think that the market is really there for us. Um, so it's a huge opportunity. So let's look at what these how these consumers are influenced now. So this is a huge stat here. 83% of consumers say rate and review sites impact the decision on a cosmetic procedure. 
and this is a 16% growth um, from 2019. 52% of consumers say a provider's social media presence impacts their decision to schedule an appointment. And 78% of consumers follow the social media of the provider they're seeking or they're seeing at the time. Last stat here is 71% of customers buy from companies whose values align with theirs. So what this is telling me in a nutshell is if you do not have an online, um, online platform, if you do not have a digital identity or your brand is not online, you are going to be lost. I think the, the days of advertising and newspapers and on TV and all that sort of stuff, it's done. I would maybe go there if I was a $20 million a year revenue clinic. But right now when we're small business owners running our clinics, just setting up online is where to go. And I think it's really important that if you don't have a digital marketing strategy or you don't have a digital presence, that you look to talk to someone that can help you already forever booked at helping us by creating amazing algorithms for our ads and getting our ads and, and making sure that we're seen by a lot of people. But it, it doesn't just stop there. When the people are attracted to your ad, they need to come in and they need to come into a digital environment that shows your brand, it shows your values, and it shows what you stand for as a clinic in this industry. Because we want to attract like-minded people because it's a lot easier to do business with like-minded like people as well. And consumers struggle to buy from people that they don't understand who they are or where they come from. So let's have a look at how consumers behave as well. 67% of patients prefer booking online. And this is a huge stat. So if the first thing that says to me about this stat is if you don't offer online booking, um, you're in big trouble because 70% of the market aren't even going to consider you. The other stat here is 26% of online appointments are booked for same day or next day appointments. And what even blows my mind even more, 34% of appointments are scheduled when your office is closed. So if we're going to all this effort and we're spending advertising dollars and we're building a huge brand online, it is so important that we offer an opportunity for our patients to be able to book any time of the day. And I see this so much in my clinic. Um, it, using the Forever Book platform, we hardly ever use the phone to follow up because people don't answer the calls. We're using the, the platform itself to text back or email back or social media back, depending on the way that um, it came in. And we're booking them online. We're booking them using our online tools and resources. And what even blows my mind even more is, and it makes sense because my wife is my perfect uh, patient. Patient, She's the perfect target market for me. My wife is a busy mother, working mother of three. When she gets a chance to book her appointments, it's normally around 10 o'clock at night when she's jumping into bed and she's doing it on the phone. So if you don't offer online booking and there's not an option to book appointments online, especially consultations, I really suggest that you look at this and you look into ways that you can work with your EMR or work with the Forever Book platform so your schedule can be online and patients can book from anywhere in the world, any time of the day. Because I think if you're not, you're, this, the data is showing that you're missing out. So let's work and look at the promotions we offer, right? So we've We've worked out that this market, there's a huge opportunity. We've worked out that our online presence, our online brand is so important. So what makes a good promo? So I've got some really simple rules um, for a good promo. I think it's so important that any promo that you offer, you have to add value to it. So we have the Vizier device in our clinic. So Whenever someone comes in for a promotion, especially if they're a new patient, we're offering a full comprehensive skin consult. And this is so important because a patient may come in for one thing, but when you actually sit down with them and you get them on the Vizier and you point out a few things, that one thing could become 10 things very, very quickly, okay? So offering, being able to offer a full comprehensive skin consult is great for you because you're gonna identify new opportunities but it's also a great added value to the patient because patients that are looking to come into this industry or patients that are already in this industry, they want to know where their skin falls, how their skin's going and how they can make their skin a lot healthier. 
The other thing for good promos as a business owner, I'm a big fan of using non-consumable devices. When you use non-consumable devices, you can add more added value and the actual promo itself in the end doesn't really cost you anything, but sometimes the time of your staff and the salary of your staff. So that brings me to the next item. When you're doing your good promotions, don't use your contract staff to fulfill the promotions. Use your salary paid staff because it's already a fixed cost in your business and you don't want to be taking any more um, costs or accruing any more costs to a promotion than you already have to. Um, the other thing when creating a good promo, it's all about offering as many revenue streams in that promotion as you possibly can. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later about how we build memberships and packages in the clinic. And the reason why I love adding more revenue streams, it means that your patient has a, a chance to touch more practitioners in your clinic, but also they have more of a chance to come for more appointments. So you've got more chance to build a relationship, but also get a better result for the patient. The other thing is it must offer added value. Um, this really is a big one. And I know there's a lot of doctors out there, especially doctors more so and clinics out there that don't like to give up too much. But what we have to understand that the average value of a cosmetic patient is, is around $2,000. Sometimes you need to give a bit early on to get them in the door to benefit for, for a patient for the lifetime of their, their patient journey. If you're going to spend money on advertising dollars, say I have a $60 limit on my Facebook and Instagram, I'm paying the $60 no matter what every day. So I might as well make it worthwhile so people are going to buy it. It's really important to offer added value and make it look like the patient is getting added value and they're getting more for the bang of their buck than they normally do. The other thing I'm a big fan of, I, I'm not a big fan of stock photos. I don't mind it for things like hair removal because it's hard to get um, hair removal photos because it's obviously a little bit more invasive. But when it comes to laser and tox and certain treatments that you're doing in, in your clinic, I am a big fan of using photos that are directly from your clinic and your treatment providers. I want the patient to feel like they've come into your clinic before the, that they know your clinic, they know your treatment provider before they even come in. And using real stock photos is a, is a great way of doing that. Um, and it gets them to already start building a relationship with you. They know who you are, they know how um, what you look like, and they can get a sense for what your clinic looks like as well. I've just got three chats here. I'm going to have a look. Um, is there any questions here? No, this is just normal questions. So I'll keep going. Everyone following me so far? Thumbs up. We're good. Awesome. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Now, the next one is the speed of your response. Now, this is the most, most important part to get the patient in. Um, I try and get back to my patients within five minutes of them, of the, them becoming a hot lead. That's why I love um, the Forever Book platform. It messages me on my watch, on my phone, on my computer whenever I get a hot lead. Um, and I'm booking patients on the golf course on the weekends. I'm booking patients before I go to bed at night. During the day, my staff take care of the Forever Book platform, but I am on my phone all the time booking patients, and I think it's so important. And I'm going to show you some stats why. Let's have a look at client acquisition and why it's so hard. Acquiring a new patient is five times more expensive than keeping your existing patients. So if a new patient hot lead comes in the door, why would you take longer than five minutes to get back to them? Because you already know you're spending a lot more money to, to create that lead, to bring them into your clinic. It is time that you just action that as soon as you possibly possibly can. And we have to remember 76% of patients consider themselves a lifetime patient after the third visit. So once we get a new bite, we have to do whatever we can to get them in the door and be part of our, our clinic for at least three or more visits because then we can build that loyalty and that purpose of them feeling like they are one of us. The other thing is increasing patient retention can add a 25% more profit to your bottom line, which is great, but we wanna be doing more than that. So we need to look at 
ways to look after our clients, but we also need to look at client acquisition as well. And let, let's look at some client acquisition stats. Almost 80% of patients go to the first clinic that replies. So we know that these patients are on social media. We know that there's a lot of clinics in our area. Once they send that message or they become that hot lead, if you're not getting back to them first, you've lost them straight away. The other thing is we know by data that five minutes is the average lifespan of an online lead. And what I mean by that is if you don't get back to them within five minutes, it's probably going to be a cold answer. They're not going to get back to you and you've probably lost that lead. And we know that you have a 900% increase in contact when you answer within five minutes. So the data is showing if you're not getting back to uh, patients within five minutes, you're probably losing that lead. But if you are, you've got a way better chance of generating that lead. And if you're spending the money or the investment on the Forever Book platform, you're spending the money on the Google, uh, the Facebook and Instagram ads, you might as well make the most of it by getting back to them within the first five minutes. So try and create an, a situation in your clinic where someone's manning those phones or manning the computer um, and when after hours that someone like yourself is doing this as well. The other stat that absolutely drives me crazy is 14% of new leads are not answered. So it's all very well having a crack at someone like Graydon if, uh, if your forever book platform is not working. But I put the pressure back on you. If you're not answering within five minutes your leads and you're leaving leads unanswered, I think you need to take a look at yourself before you look at the forever book platform because most people I've talked to, actually 99% of people that I've talked to around, around Forever Booked are loving the platform and it's getting them great leads. And the 1% that I talk to that aren't, they're not answering within the five minutes and they're leaving leads on the table, which is huge. The other thing we have to understand is the average aesthetic patient is worth $2,000. So they are so valuable to get in the door. Imagine if we're bringing two to three leads in a day and we're booking them for consults we're adding around $6,000 of revenue to our clinic every day. So speed is everything. I can't emphasize that enough. It is, it is so, so important. And I think that's one of the main reasons why we're um, getting huge success with the platform today. Okay, let's interrupt you, interrupt yeah. you for a second, Nathan. Like, yeah, just to add on that, I also can't stress that enough. Like every, after working with hundreds of clinics over five years, um, Usually if the clinics have struggling, I, I ask them, okay, how fast are you contacting the leads? And like, I've had many situations where they say, well, they like leave it, they either like leave it for the end of the day or they batch it. Sometimes they wait like, like a day or two. And if you do that, there's just, there's just no possible way that you can succeed. So I can't stress that enough to contact people quickly. You I do have a question though here. Yep. Yeah, yeah, what's question? Yeah. You've lost it. So Fred asks. Uh, most of his leads are coming in after hours. What do you do with those for the leads that are coming in after hours? Yes, yeah, so I'm answering them. So I know it's crazy. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm getting a lead at two in the morning, right? I hear my phone. No, no, so like, not, you, know, you see what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm getting like five or six of those will come in, in the middle of the night. I mean, like, I don't want to, you know yeah, what I mean? So, so, so <laughs> yeah, I get that. So, yes, yeah, so I, I go to bed around 11 o'clock and I wake up at six, right? So, obviously, those leads coming in between 11 and six. Um, I am, I am not getting back to as fast. However, I think those patients are more understanding because that's like, I'm guessing they're the same time zone as me because this is a very local business environment. Um, so like, obviously that's, that's one rule where I will let you get away with that less, uh, more than five minutes. However, if I was seeing this become a massive trend, and it was say like 10, 15 leads a night on the regular, I would probably consider finding a way to man those leads at that time because you yeah, think use a VA or something. Yeah. yeah, I would look at a call center or there must be um, a third party company that can man leads between 11 and 6, 11 at night and 6 a.m. in the morning. And you can give them a login to the Forever Book platform and you would pay them a, I don't know, an hourly rate to man it. Because if your average patient is worth $2,000 and you've got 20 leads coming in between 11 o'clock at night and six in the morning, 
I want to try and convert at least 10 of those, right? No, no, it's crazy. I'm like, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm hearing this ding on my phone and it's like two in the morning. I'm like, who is up at two in the morning scheduling <laughs> yeah. a weight loss appointment? I mean, it's insane. I'm like, oh my God. So, oh, so you're, anyway. you're, you're a weight loss clinic? I am, yeah. Yeah, so when you think about it, like- You must be binging and going, oh my God, I don't 100%. want to do this anymore. <laughs> you, you think of all the consults you're doing where- um, people are waking up in the middle of the night to make themselves a sandwich. Um, you know, like this is when they're feeling <clears throat> the worst and they know that they have a problem. Um, so they're eating their sandwich while they're online, probably Googling clinics like yours. So if it's becoming a, a, a common trend, it might be worth spending a month paying a third, if you have the budget, pay a third party, uh, a company to man man the forever book line for you and see if it's worth the return on investment no i agree okay that would be my advice thank on you that. thank you okay so let's sorry we're gonna go back let's, we have, let's, we have a couple more uh patient. sorry sorry to interrupt you again nathan but we've got a couple more questions if yeah. we have too many questions you can just do them at the end but if you, we have a couple more here from yeah, i don't mind joining us we are so we don't miss points yeah yeah so blair asks as you receive the lead, what's your process? Do you explain the details and ask them what their skin concerns are, like when you chat with the lead? So when I get the lead in, because my promo is pretty self-explanatory, I'll, I'll tell you what my one of my most successful uh, promos right now is. We, we're we're pr predominantly, we're a tox clinic until I took over earlier this year. So we did tox and filler. We didn't have many devices. I've purchased about eight or nine devices this year to really... Uh, bolster our, our laser and skin health um, side of the practice. So our, our, our promo that's done really well, it's $300. And we have the, the laser Genesis and the Elite IQ. Um, they both do a, an amazing feathering facial. Um, we charge around $350 for that treatment, but I'm doing 30 units of tox and uh, a laser facial for $300. So they're essentially getting the laser treatment for free. Um, I offer that to all patients as a one-time deal. So existing and new patients. And I blast it all over my forever. Have to have all, over, like 11, I think. all over my social media. Um, so that's what we're using to get them in the door. Um, <laughs> So when they come in, they know what they're getting into. So the conversation when they when they come when they come in. Sorry, someone. Wait, sorry. Let me uh, let me mute whoever's talking here. Um, um who could it be? Yes, I'll carry on. So when they come when they come in th through the Forever Book platform, they're booking and that that they're mostly really really warm so it's basically just when would you like to book the appointment it's like hello thank you for reaching out we would love to schedule you in when is your next availability to come into the clinic um and then it's basically a, a conversation sometimes they ask is it doctors doing the injection versus nurses they sometimes ask a little bit more um around what the laser treatment entails and i just send them a link to my website that explains how the laser works what it's going to do for them. Um, and then they they give me a date and a time and I book them in. So it's it's maybe like five or six messages back and forth. And then I'm booking them in my system. I use an ER, EMR platform called Jane. Jane then sends them uh, an intake form and a medical history form to fill out. And they get a notification of their booking. And then they get notifications leading up to their appointment. Um, if I think it's a bit of a dodgy patient or it's someone that i think is a little bit flaky i'll flag them in my system and my admin person will will ring them a couple of days before their appointment or the day before their appointment just to make sure they're going to show up but i honestly with forever booked my no-show rate has been less than my normal patient no-show rate so i'm not really worried with my forever booked uh, no-show rate at the moment um i wasn't taking payments uh up front but now I decided this month I'm going to try it out. So I'm taking payments on the day of the promotion. Uh, I, I, I ran a couple of promos yesterday and I did $4,000 worth of sales yesterday on my day off on Monday, just, just through the Forever Book platform. And I got them to pay to book the promo in. And 
I had one patient that was a little bit iffy about it. So I just asked them to do a 50% 50, 50 deposit. Does that answer your question, whoever asked that? I lost you, Graydon. Yeah, so Blair says yes. Um, perfect. And then Tara has a question. Uh, yeah, what about people? She says people that are coming in for a $300 treatment, uh, they're tend to wanting a discount. How do you overcome people that, uh, you know, are just really focused on the discount, like that objection? Sorry, say that again. A, uh, Tara says, I've seen patients who are coming in for a $300 treatment are always wanting a discount. How do you overcome this and aren't always offering discounts and still retaining them? So are you overcoming like the, you know, yeah, so, I always want to have a discount? Yeah, so I'll answer that a little bit more in detail when we get to how I build packages and menus in my clinic. I'm a big fan of creating like uh, multi-modality treatment plans uh, and memberships. So um, when I build packages for patients, they always feel like they're, they're getting like a bit of a deal. Um, but I explained to them, look, this is just an introductory offer for you to um, feel the laser, get your tox done. Um, this is a one-time only. And then in the consult, it's all about educating them around their skin health and proving to them that their skin is worth it to invest this type of money into keeping their, their skin health a priority. Um, these patients are going to the dentist three or four times a year um, to look after their, their mouth uh, hygiene and their teeth. Um, I explain that the skin is the, the biggest organ in the body. Um, and you just need to go online to look at uh, uh, skin cancer rates in the US and Canada to show that Americans and Canadians aren't looking after their skin. Um, and any sort of survey we do, if people want to look good or feel good, they'll always put, pick look good for, first. And I can argue that by looking good, it makes people feel good in the long run as well. So I think it's down to your consultation um, and also the way you package your your treatment plans moving oh, forward. Is after it you've them into this. Let me mute. Uh, we're not through there. Okay, awesome. we're good. Is there another question? Nope, you can continue. Okay, cool. So the patient journey, and this is a, a huge focus because we're as clinics, we spend so much money and we put so much effort into getting patients in the door, whether it's our existing patients or new patients. And that means it's so important to really make sure our patient journey is on point. And I like to call it the greatest show because when they come in, you are the greatest showman or you are the greatest showwoman. You need to show off everything that your clinic has and the way you do things um, and, and make it make the, the, the patient or the client feel a million bucks throughout the whole process. And in order to do this, there is a lot of things that we can do to really refine our patient journey. But the first thing is we have to understand where the patient journey starts. It doesn't start from when the patient walks in your clinic. It starts way before that. It starts on their first contact. So you, their first contact is generally going to be a digital contact. It's going to be an ad they see on social. It could be your website. It could be your Instagram. It could be your Facebook. And whatever it is, it has to look and feel like your clinic. And they must, right from the start, feel like they're getting the vibe and the brand and the culture of your clinic. So it's so important. And I'll emphasize this again, just like I did earlier in the presentation. Your digital platform and your digital presence is so important. And then the patient journey goes from the digital experience all the way through to the Google review. So it doesn't stop at the treatment. It doesn't stop when they leave your clinic. You have to find a way to get your patients to also capture them with a Google review and then get them back in the door again in regards to rebook them. On that day that they're leaving, they must rebook for another treatment, follow-up, tox appointment or whatever it is, you must keep that cycle going with a message going out to them or a prompt at reception to scan something for a Google review. And the best way to look at our patient experience is to really look at the senses. So you need to look at when a patient's coming in the door or they're experiencing something digitally or they're experiencing something online with your clinic. What can they see? 
what can they hear what can they taste um what can they feel what can they smell and little things like this in the clinic does your clinic have its own scent you know like we do um we do a lot of facials in our clinic uh soft aesthetics facials and on the days we're doing facials the smell of our hallway is amazing and we book two or three more facials on those days because patients come walking in the hallway of our building into our front door and they're like what's that amazing smell and it's oh one of our estheticians is doing a facial today oh i need to book one of those you know little things like that what can your patients hear when they walk in the door what sort of music is playing does that music reflect your brand does it reflect who you stand for what can they taste in the when they walk in the uh, the clinic are you offering perrier water are you offering bubbly do you offer um some people I, I see a lot of clinics that have like a candy station you know like what are you doing from a taste point of view um what can people see are there tvs in your clinic is your clinic clean like do you have cleaners that come in regularly like is it spotlessly clean what are the tv showing are they showing promotions are they showing treatments that you can get done in the the clinic are they showing maybe like one of your favorite tv series or, or something like that does it fit with your brand and what can what can patients touch what can they touch what can they touch in the experience in the consult room do you sometimes pulse your non-consumable laser on their hand so they can feel what the treatment's going to feel like can they touch skincare samples can they feel it on the back of their hands are you allowing them to put certain skincare products on their face at a consultation these are things that you need to consider write down the five senses and then put little bullet points of what you're offering in your clinic and what you think you could offer in the future to make that clinic experience a lot more valuable to your patient but also make sure it stays on brand to your clinic and how do we really measure these things or how do we look to improve on these things is these three little areas is I really encourage clinic owners to be a patient for the day in their clinic. And when I mean by be a patient for the day, I mean book a, a consultation online. So you go through the online process, you fill out your online forms because sometimes they can be very tedious and you might want to refine them. You drive in, you park in the visitor parking, you walk into your clinic and you go through the whole process. You are going to notice some things that you got, you want to change in your patient experience right from the start. The other thing is you can hire mystery shoppers or you can get friends or people that you trust to come in and be a patient for the day as well that are going to give you good feedback. And lastly, survey your VIP patients. Reach out to your VIP patients, touch base with them as a business owner and just say, hey, Sally, I would love to know what your experience was like in our clinic last time you came in. What would you change? What did you really like? It's so important to be getting this sort of information and involving your patient journey over time because you're spending all this money to acquire these patients. You better make sure when they come in the door that you're offering the most amazing experience so they're going to hang around. Uh, the next... This brings us next into menus and pricing. So I'm trying to get through this because I understand people have uh, other things to go to. So we've we've got the patient in the door. We've we've paid all that money. We've acquired them in. We've taken them uh, through our patient experience. Now we need to look at our menu and pricing. And I think this is where ninety percent of clinics that we go into from a consulting process are failing. And the reason why is because they haven't updated their menu or pricing in probably the last four years. And we have to think we're in an innovative industry. This is all about being innovative. If you haven't updated your menu and pricing in the last four years, you are not up to date. And let's look at um, menus and pricing. Um, what One thing I like to use is what we call the TRD triangle. Um, in my menus and pricing, I like to build packages that include tox, laser, and skincare all incorporated together. So when a patient comes into my clinic and they want tox, I'm offering them a package which also has laser and skincare in it. If they're coming and wanting skincare, I'm offering them a package that also has tox and laser. And if they come in for laser, I'm offering them a package that also has tox and skincare. I want them to convert to everything in my clinic for many reasons. One, more touch points with the patient so I can build a better relationship. Because remember, a patient that comes in three times becomes a loyal customer. 
Secondly, if I'm doing everything that I have at my disposal, I've got the better chance of getting a better result. And thirdly, if I hook them in to a package that incorporates everything in my clinic, my patient spend per patient is going to be a lot higher, which means I'm going to grow my clinic without necessarily growing my patient database. And it's all about generating more revenue at this point. So how do we do that? There's, there's a few ways we do that. Number one is doing combos. And let's be honest, McDonald's are the king of this. I, as a society, when we go out for lunch now, we always go buy a sandwich and we're always getting a side and a drink with it. And McDonald's created this, this culture. So why can't we create this culture in our clinic that when a patient comes in, they're so well educated in our industry, they're so well educated by your clinic that they know when they're going to purchase a laser package, they're going to need skincare to pair with it and some sort of toxin filler package to go with it. And if we look at the business behind combos, we're looking at studies. If you use combos in your clinic, you're going to get a 50% increase to the average order of your patients coming in. So combos are a great way to enhance the patient experience, but also enhance revenue and guarantee better results in your clinic. The next thing is gift with purchase. Our competitors are doing it. Sephora and drugstores sell a lot more skincare than our clinics do, and their skincare is garbage, guys. They're not selling evidence-based skincare. They're selling garbage skincare that doesn't even treat the skin, but they do it well because they offer gift with purchase, and patients love a good deal. And you can package things up very creatively that doesn't cost you much, and it's better than doing a discount because if I give away, say, $500 worth of skincare on a $5,000 purchase, it's only costing me $250, which is a lot less than a $500 discount. And let's look at some data behind this. Research tells us that 90% of consumers say a free gift with purchase increases brand loyalty. And 90% of those that receive a free gift are more likely to buy that free gift or buy something else after receiving that gift afterwards. So we know that data tells us that gift with purchase works as well. And then the last one is when it comes to creating menus and packages, and this is my most important one, and this is something that we do very successfully in our clinic, is memberships and subscriptions. And the reason why I love memberships and subscriptions is because of the following. It's better results for patients because they're coming in every month. For a business owner, it's predict predictable recurring uh, revenue. It, it softens the blow of the payment upfront. I take a deposit, a big deposit, and then a monthly payment. It allows for better cash flow and it reduces our churn rate. And when we look at it, subscription and membership models have grown 435% over the last 10 years. And when you look at your life and the way you spend, everything is monthly. Our mortgages, our daycare, our cell phone bills, our gym memberships, our Netflix, everything we pay is generally a monthly fee. So why as clinics are we trying to change the norm? Why don't we stick to what patients are used to doing and comfortable doing and providing monthly subscription and membership options for our patients to be loyal customers in our clinic? It's a no-brainer in my opinion. And that leads us to lastly to the consultation process. And I'm going to whip through this really quickly because I've only got 10 minutes. Um, this is the most important room in the clinic. It's the most important person. And I encourage you, if you have someone that is a gun or a superstar at the consultation process, I encourage you to commission them well, cuddle them, love them and hold on to them because this is where it all starts. If you have a great consultant who can, who can sell a lot of packages and can put people on amazing patient journeys, they are the hardest people to get. And this is where it always starts. And how do we get better at the consultation process? The first area of getting better at the consultation process is to never assume the, the patient's wallet. And I'm going to tell you a little personal story about this. A few years ago, I had a terrible back I had awful pain in my back. I went to so many specialists and doctors and they finally worked out that I needed new orthotics. The day I turned up to the foot doctor, the specialist, I was in the backyard. I had taken the day off and I was doing yard work 
and I turned up at the foot specialist with flip-flops, a singlet, and I had mud all over myself because I was going to be late to the appointment. I lost track of time. And the doctor prescribed me a $300 pair of orthotics. I went back four months for the follow-up and I was wearing a suit because I had been at a business meeting and the doctor started talking to me at a totally different level. And he asked what my wife did for a job. I said, she works for the federal government. She obviously he knows now that she has benefits in Canada. And he asked what I did for a job, which he didn't the time before. He assumed that I was basically a bum because of what I turned up in. Um, and I said, I work in cosmetic medicine. As soon as I said that, he went as white as a ghost because he knew my next uh, message to him was, these orthotics aren't working, doctor. There must be another option. He said to me, I'm really sorry, Nathan. I assume that you couldn't afford the best option, but I gave you the cheapest option because I thought you couldn't afford it, but there's actually a $1,500 option and your wife probably has benefits for this um, to cover this. And this is going to get you a far better result. We are medical practitioners and we have a responsibility to our patients to offer the best case scenario. If money is an issue, then we can discuss that afterwards. But if you're not offering the best case scenario, you're making an ass out of you and you're making an ass out of your patient. You're not giving them the best possible care. And when I say this to doctors and healthcare professionals, if someone came in with cancer, and was and needed your help to save their life, there is no way you're not going to give them the best chemotherapy treatment. So it's really important you're going to kill your own business if you don't offer the best case scenario. And I wanted to share that personal uh, uh, story with you because that sore back was stopping me from playing with my kids in the backyard and it was worth the $1,500 to me, even if I didn't have benefits. The next thing in the consult room is these are three tools that you can use and you can train your patients on and I could spend a day on all of these the, itself I really challenge you to look up a thing called the layer method um, there's plenty of information online it'll teach your staff how to do a full consult from start to finish it is an amazing method that I use in all my consults and since I've started using it my consultations have been I've been closing 10 to 15% more consults on average. The other thing is visual tools and then the way you close a patient. So we're going to talk about these. We're going to go through them each one qu quickly. So the layer method stands for four things. It's listen, acknowledge, explore, and respond. So we'll go into listen first. Um, so how do we listen properly? So the first thing I do when I go into a consult room is I take my phone out of my wallet, of my pocket, sorry, and I put it on a table on the other side of the room. And the reason why I do this in today's day and age, that shows the patient that I have their clear and undivided attention. And what I do is when I walk into the room, I sit down, I introduce myself and I shut up. And I shut up for about 10 minutes. And your patient is going to, start talking and they're going to tell you their life story. They're going to tell you everything they've done in the in industry. They're going to nervously talk with you and they're going to open up. And by doing this, I'm creating trust and I'm creating a safe space for them to open up to me around anything. As soon as I see their skin, I know exactly the treatment protocol I'm going to offer them, but I resist the urge to offer them solutions right from the start because I need to, I need to ask more questions and I need to get more into the consult before I start responding. And the first thing I need to do is I need to acknowledge their, their issues. Because a lot of these patients are coming in. It could be things like acne. It could be things like melasma, hyperpigmentation. And people in their life are saying, hey, your acne is not bad. Don't worry about it. Oh, your pigmentation doesn't matter. Who cares? Like, just keep living life. People in their life are not acknowledging these as an issue. And just by you acknowledging them that issue and acknowledging how it makes them feel, it, it creates so much trust and rapport with the patient. Then while you're acknowledging, you have to understand their concerns. So you, I repeat, so, so Sandra, your main concern is sun damage. I want them to repeat it back to me. So I understand that I'm hitting the nail on the head of what their concern is. 
And then I need to understand the need. So I understand you have a wedding coming up and you would like the sun damage gone before the wedding next summer. And then I need to understand how does this make the patient feel? Like how desperate are they to get rid of this? Because that's in my mind, I'm starting to build how quickly do I need to get rid of it? What sort of devices I'm going to use? What sort of budget I'm going to need to get this done in a timely matter? matter. The next option is to explore. And now you're under uncovering opportunities. So you're asking a lot of questions around how much time they can commit, how much downtime can they give you? For instance, if it's someone that's on TV every morning for the breakfast show, you're not going to be able to do invasive technologies. You're probably going to have to go a little bit slower and do more maintenance treatments. How much can they commit? What's their budget? What's How often can they come into the clinic? And then the, in this area, you're also managing expectations around how realistic this patient is, what they expect. And I use a lot of before and afters. I show, say, look, this technology gets me these results as an average. Is this something you would be happy with? Because I don't want any of those whack job patients that think that they're going to get a surgical result from a laser treatment. I just don't want those in my clinic, patients in my clinic. And if they are, I want to refer them to surgery straight away because I don't want to be giving someone a treatment that doesn't have realistic expectations. So a lot of the times you're going through the listen, acknowledge and explore. You're going round and round in circles until you get the enough information to respond. And when we respond, and I would take a photo of this if you can, these are the areas that we need to respond with. We need to respond with their concern. We need to respond understanding their need, their emotions, how much downtime and commitment they can, can give to us and managing their expectations. We need to essentially build a flexible solution tailored to that patient to all of those needs, all of those needs here. If we don't respond with this, we are not gonna close the deal. We are missing something in the jigsaw puzzle. This is what your respond must cover. And that's why we're building, we need to build tailored memberships and tailored protocols and menus that allow us to do that. All good there? Almost finished, guys. The next thing is visual tools. And visual tools are so important. I'm gonna give you some stats here. Relevant images are 94, get 94% more views than content without images. Um, visual social media posts get a 650% more engagement. People only remember 10% of the information they hear after three days, but if you give them an image or some sort of visual, that retention rises to 65%. And visual content, the content is processed 60,000 times faster by the brain. We are living in a visual world. Instagram has created a visual world. People want to see results. They want to see what's going on. So it is so important for us to use visuals in our consult room. And these are some of the things that we can use. Before and afters are golden. And the best before and afters are your own before and afters. If you're a nurse or a physician or a medical esthetician, if you can show a patient your own before and afters on your devices and skincare and toxin filler, the patient is going to be more likely to buy because you have created trust. Skincare testers, if they can see and feel the skincare that they're going to use before they put it on, it's so important. I always have a whiteboard and marker because I draw diagrams of the skin when I'm in the console and I show them where the wavelength of the laser is going. I show them what the skincare is doing. I always have videos of treatments um, that so they can see what the treatment sounds like, what a patient looks like when they're getting treated. I always have photos and videos of recovery of treatments as well, patients the day of, the next day, and so on. And I like to sometimes, if I can, if the devices aren't being used, I, sh I take them and I show them the device that we're going to use on them. And if it's a non-consumable device, I'll turn it on and I will pulse it on their hand so they can feel it. Visual consults are so important. Lastly, that brings us to the close and we're almost finished. When they come into your clinic, always have something to close them. Always have a tool for your closer to go to with special offers that you're offering that day or that month. So there is a there is a call to action at the end of each 
um, console. And so the patient feels like they feel special the day of if they buy that day. Try and develop these tools, change them from month to month, but make it a tangible tool that the patient can take a photo of or they can take home with them or hopefully you can close them on on that day. These tools are so valuable for your staff. Um, right now, we're running a promotion in our clinic that if I, our staff doesn't offer you our monthly specials in your consult, you get a free treatment on us. So it's encouraging that conversation of our staff to talk to our patients about what's on offer in our clinic this month. So that's the end of my presentation. I'm going to do like a little nice little plug for us. We have a Revenue Doctors Academy that's online where we present a lot of presentations like I did today. Um, we have 70 something videos up there talking about the patient experience, the patient journey and how you can make that better. Um, I also have a podcast that I'm on called the Aesthetic Coaches Quarter. We have over close to 50,000 downloads now. There's 50 episodes. Um, it's on all your main podcast providers. They're 15 minute bite side episodes that you can listen to and from work. There are things on things like should staff wear uniforms? Should our staff pay for treatments? Uh, how do we retain staff? Um, how do we set up an, uh, a successful event? All sorts of conversations. It's five, myself and four other consultants. We argue a lot on the podcast. We discuss. It's, it's Some of the episodes are pretty funny as well. I encourage you that. It's 50 episodes of free content that will help give you ideas for your clinic. And lastly, you are now part of my network. Feel free to scan this QR code. It links you to um, myself and my business partner's information. Feel free to reach out to us. I'm happy to answer one or two questions every now and then. If it becomes 20 or 30 questions, I'm going to send you an invoice. But um, feel free to reach out whenever. And I really hope that this was worthwhile. It's a lot to get through in an hour. But um I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm around to answer them. And just yeah, while we're so talking much. here, my front admin staff has just booked three patients on Forever Booked <laughs> in the hour that we've been in. So we've just launched some new promotions yesterday. So we did around $4,000 worth of sales yesterday and we've booked five patients now today on them. So it's kind of nice and timely. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Lathan. You're getting lots of love here. Lots of thanks. And thank you to everyone that's showing up. We have, um, let's just go through a couple of questions here. So if you have any questions, post them below. Um, first one is from Kendi. She says, how long are your consults and do you charge for them? Yeah. So my consults are 45 minutes. Um, I don't need all that time, but I take it because I want the patient to get emotional with me and really um, open up so I spend a lot of time just listening to them and sometimes they're talking to me about all sorts of problems I'm sure you've all been there with clients breaking down in your consult room like that to me tells me that I'm doing my job I'm creating an environment of them being comfortable in my presence and that's one of the reasons why I put the cell phone on the other side of the room and I mirror them I sit and I will mirror them because studies show that if you mirror a patient if they're crossing their legs I'll cross mine if they're folding their arms I'll fold mine studies show that that helps them make feel, them feel comfortable I do not charge for consults because my um because I'm not a dermatologist or plastic surgeon and because my consult uh my consult close rates very very high like I'm over the 85 percent if I was getting a lot of no-shows and my consult rate wasn't high. There's a lot of things that I would look into. I would maybe start charging for consults, maybe to weed out the people that aren't serious, but there's a lot of things I would look into. I think there are some people that can get away with charging for consults. Like if you have a six month waiting list, yeah, charge for consults, but I'm not at that problem right now. And my, my conversion rate's high. So I don't want to create a barrier of entry for me to educate someone about their skin health because I back myself in the consult room. Cool. But I could spend a whole day consulting someone around their consult process, yeah. Yeah, 45 minutes is a pretty common time, like 45 yeah. to... to 60 I think minutes. 45 minutes is a good time, yeah. Yeah. Blair asks, what ads or promotions are you currently running at your practice? So the forever booked ones, I'm guessing. So <clears throat> we're doing that 300 
dollar. Yeah, do you uh, mind if I actually uh, share my screen and show the promotions as you talk about them, Nathan? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's fine. I'm doing the three hundred dollar. I call it the Rio Glow facial. So they get the Indiag facial and the and the thirty units of tox. I'm doing another one for my Pikachu Pro device that I just launched this month. It's a really good one because Pikachu Pro is a thousand dollar treatment. I'm doing fifty units of tox and a Pikachu Pro uh, treatment for five fifty. Um, and what's the other one I'm doing? I'm doing a laser hair removal one at the moment. I'm trying this for the first time. And it is, um, what's my laser hair removal one? It is three areas for $300. And yeah, that one, I'm having an issue with this one. It got disapproved today, but I've, I've, I've gone, I've asked them to review it because I think it's BS. Facebook's being yeah. a pain in the ass. Yeah, oftentimes it's BS. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at these. Okay, yeah, so this is your fall glow. Yeah, that's my full glow one. Yeah. So yeah, three hundred dollars. They get talks and then an IPL. Yeah, this IPL, is a good one. It's either an IPL or a laser facial. They get to choose. Yeah, there's sort of like three different like tiers. There's like low ticket offers, which are high volume. That's like usually ninety seven. There's this mid ticket offer, which is a three hundred dollars, and then he's also running like a high ticket. So yeah, there's there's different options here. So that's the fall glow one. I did another one last month that went quite well. It was the Rio Summer Cleanup, and it was oh, yeah. three three laser treatments, a skincare package, and a um, and thirty units of tox for twelve hundred dollars. And I got yeah. I got some good bites on that as well. Yeah, and, and I'm still good. making I'm still making like around sixty percent margin on most of my offers, guys. So like I'm not. I'm not, I'm not throwing away the kitchen sink. I'm just offering these things to get people in, get a taste. And then I back myself to sell them a package once they're in the door. And you know what? It's helping with my existing clients because I'm getting some of my sleepy clients that haven't been in in six to eight months coming in for, for talks. And we're finding out that some of them have gone elsewhere in between. So it's helping me re retain my, uh, my other, my other, um, Here's my laser hair removal one, the three areas for $300. So that gives people an opportunity to do say like arms, legs, Brazilian or Brazilian armpits, legs for 300 bucks. Nice. No, these are great. So I'm yet to see how this one's going to go because I just launched that yesterday. But the, the, uh, the, people, the forever young, I've already booked four, four or five people in for that. So that was 2,500 bucks already. And then the, yeah, the and this room, one's like this a, one's like a really good deal. It's like it's the regular prices. It's an amazing deal. It's an amazing deal. And you know what? I worked with my um, I worked with my uh, my uh, device company. I did a bulk purchase of consumables for this, and they gave me a free tip. So the the treatments I'm going to do on this is not costing me anything. So I work with my suppliers to help make these deals. Uh, create more margin for me. So I'm not giving away as much as what I normally am. Yeah. Um, well, sorry. Who was that? Oh, it was me. Hi. Hello. Who's this? Uh, uh, yes. I was wondering on the laser hair removal one that you are running for the three areas. Is that like a membership kind of a deal, like the 300 every month or is just one time session for the 300? Okay. So that's, Yes, yeah, so that's a really good question. For me, like if I was busy with ha laser hair removal, I would do it as a one-off, but I'm not a laser hair removal clinic. And um, that's one of my issues. That's an area where it's a weakness for me. So if a patient comes in and wants to buy this, I'm going to allow them on the day of when they come in for their, because they're going to prepay for it before they come in. If they come in the day of their first treatment and they want to load up, I will allow them to bulk load up on this. I wouldn't do that if I was a busy laser hair removal clinic, though. I would just allow them to do it the one time. But I'm trying to grow my laser hair removal package, and I have a medical esthetician that's not at her capacity right now, so I want to find a way to make her um, at her capacity. And you have to understand my business model. I'm not in it for laser hair removal. Laser hair removal patients, for me, they come in the door so I can show them everything else I do in my clinic. I see that as a loss leader to get them to buy other things in my clinic. Right. If you're a laser, if you're a laser hair removal clinic, 
then I would it would be a different it would be a different offering. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. It's it's really important that you don't cannibalize your own business. So I do things door and then and I back my team and myself to upgrade them to other packages when they're in. Um, that's why I do soft aesthetics. I don't make much money off soft aesthetics. I break even at best. It's to get patients in the door to see everything else I do and be educated on the other, other treatments that we do in clinic where I make higher margins. Thank you. Yeah, but no, great question. And then Blair asks, do you offer the NDA facial and Botox on the same day? Yes. Yeah. So we do the laser first, obviously. And so with my nurse, it becomes a 45 minute treatment. So they're in and out within 45 minutes. And then if my nurse is good enough, she's booking them another treatment or another package. And if I book with my esthetician, I just book them alongside each other. So they, they go with my esthetician for the first 25 minutes and they do the tox in the last 20 minutes of the treatment. So I book them alongside, but yeah, I think it's important to, to get them in and do it on the same day. So you're not, you're spending as less resources as possible towards this initial promo. Um, and why you treat, why my pay, they come in, they do their Vizier photos. They do a, con a, a quick consultation on the Vizier and why my laser technician or nurse is treating them. She's got 25 minutes with their mouth shut um, to talk to them about their skin and what sort of other treatments they can do. So it becomes a full consult and nine times out of 10, the patient's leaving with that, that next package or that next call to action. And we do a two week tox follow up anyway. So they have to come in for that anyway. What kind awesome. of machine do you have for the NDR? Cause there's certain so machines that, uh-huh. I have two. I I have the the Genesis laser by Cutera, uh -huh. and then I have the Elite. Then I have the Elite IQ by Sinusure. So my my because of Forever Booked, I had to buy another YAG laser because I couldn't keep up with uh, the demand. And this is my lost leader, right? So um, it made sense for me to buy another laser so I can have them running side by side together. So because um, my laser Genesis or my ND YAG laser facial, that's my that's my uh, get the person in, get them to love my clinic, and then they fall in love with everything else afterwards. Okay. Because the machine that I have, at least they say it's a raw aesthetics one device, and they said uh, not to do toxin and uh, the NDIAG the same day. Uh, the so my, my medical director has no issue with it. So we're doing it. I, that, that's a question for your medical director. Like everyone has different comfortabilities with certain devices but like we we treat tox a lot after certain laser devices that we do like with ipl too ipl yep yep okay. we're not worried about that yeah right. and look every medical director has different comfort levels like and that's why we that's what makes this world so beautiful right everyone everyone has a different comfort level so Nathan, you. do you do the Botox first then, and then you treat them with no, the laser? No, we, we, do, we do the Botox second. Has anyone, like if you've had a laser facial done, it's it's just a glow, like it's not an aggressive treatment whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Bendy asks, what are the machines again for the laser facials? So I use the Genesis laser and the Elite IQ from Sinusure. But any 1064 laser can do this. It's a laser facial. It's um, There's a lot out there in the industry. I would say if you're doing hair removal, there's a high chance you have a 1064 laser. Yeah, if it's a multi-platform, which is like mine, you can do like five, the IPL, you can do the ND, yeah. uh, you can do the uh, laser hair removal all from the same platform. But Which is, that's that's the thing that the the company told me. No, you cannot do both on the same day, like toxin and lasers. But I know other providers. I'm the medical director on my own practice. Okay. Uh, but I know other colleagues that do, like for example, RF microneedling and CO two resurfacing the same day, like Dr. Yeah. Emmer, for example. So. So I'm doing, um, I'm doing RF microneedling and picosecond technology same day as well. Like um, I'll do a chemical pill 
laser genesis. I'll do a, a hydrofacial laser genesis. I, I'm a big fan of stacking treatments. Mm -hmm. I think it's great for results, but it's also great to ex, uh, increase that revenue per patient as well. I also have a radio frequency standalone device called the Tempture from Sinusure. I try, I tr I tr I've just brought that in just to upgrade people to the eye package because I can layer that with any other treatment I'm doing. Would you like to upgrade your package for $200 today? It's a 10 minute treatment to stimulate collagen around the eye area. Okay. Most, pe most people are going to say yes to that, right? Who doesn't want collagen around the eye? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Blair asked, do you use the Qterra XEO IPL? So I have the Zeo platform. I don't have that handpiece because I have the Lumeca IPL, but like that Qterra Zeo platform, it's a wonderful device. I have the Pearl Fractionated Laser handpiece. So we do the Erbium resurfacing, but like if you have that handpiece, it's a great IPL. <laughs> I just didn't need it. I didn't. I didn't need it at the time because I have an IPL device, but I have the option to upgrade it when my IPL gets busy. But um, I IPL is a scary device for me. Like I think most of the, I use it a lot, but only on Fitzpatrick one to three. I don't use it with Melasma. I find that most of our scares in our industry come from an IPL device being used on the wrong patient. And a lot of the times we don't know a patient has Melasma, right? It's not until we, we bring it out and IPL brings it out. Um, so I only use the IPL when I really have to because I have the YAG laser for redness and I have my Pico laser for pigmentation. But people that have had IPLs regularly and get great results, I used it a lot on. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of stacking treatments too. Not from just like a treatment standpoint, just because it's, yeah, it's great for marketing. It's like, you can stack treatments together. And it also is like a very good narrative to tell people. It's like, it, it's combination therapy, right? And you can differentiate yourself as a med spa by saying, I may have the same treatments as this med spa, but I know how to combine them together in like a, a way that's more efficient for you and get this better result. Yeah, and the, and the other thing is when you stack treatments, you, you, you've got more chance of guaranteeing results and you don't need to necessarily stack them on the same day. You protocol them together. Um, also, it's hard for people to price match. And then when I put things on social media, I don't put before and afters up of like, this is the Pico second technology. I'm like, this is our hyperpigmentation protocol. So it creates um, intrigue. And then they're going to reach out. How did you get this result? Well, we'll come in for a consult and we'll show you how. Everyone's different. We're going to tailor a package to your needs. Um, because it's it's never just one device. It's always skincare. It's always toxin filler. And it's always a series of laser treatments that's going to get you that result. And I think the more we educate patients these days, it's gone to the days of offering three IPL or three this or three that. Let's offer two of that, three of that, four of that. And this is the reason why. And, and call it something. Brand it under your clinic name. Like make it a unique name because then no one's going to go on another person's website and compare apples with apples when it comes to pricing you make yourself so unique and different and innovative in the industry and i think that's important yeah it's like you almost have to uncondition yourself because like all the laser companies all their education and all their materials of course they want you to like focus on them right it's like i'm using this brand of laser and like that's what makes me special is this brand of laser but you want to do the opposite of that because that's just like lumping you in with all the other clinics. Right. So you kind of like, you don't want to totally ignore what they say, but a lot of what they say, you got to take with a grain of salt and like be unique and create your own combinations. Yeah. And I have a menu that has three of this, four of that, and three of that. That's uh, sorry, three IPLs or four Picos, whatever, but I never use it. Like I say to the patient, look, this is what it costs for four Pico treatments but you're better to spend five and a half thousand dollars with me for the year and 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 sign up to a membership because then you get a series of different treatments rather than spending twenty seven hundred dollars on three pico treatments spend five and a half thousand with me and come in for 12 treatments and you'll get three pico treatments as part of that 100 percent all right, guys, um, that looks like all the questions. If you have any more, your last chance here, post some questions in the chat. If you 
want to ask Blair's okay Blair has, a, Blair has another question yep go ahead Blair you can either type it or if you want to unmute yourself and ask you can no I don't have pricing on my website um the reason why is I want people to call me because I want to then it's my job to get them in for a consult because nothing happens on the phone um I think it's really important to get the patient in your clinic and in front of you because it changes the dynamic. Um, and I want to know how many people are calling me asking for pricing during the day because I want to get a, a sense for the feel of the market and you know how like how warm it is out there. Um, and if someone's not prepared to come in for a consult, then they're just price shopping. And I don't want my competitors to necessarily see that. And I don't want patients who are price shopping to use my website as a resource. Um, cost of my memberships, they vary. I have like three or four tiers and they range from around 2,500 a year to five and a half. And it varies from around six, seven, nine or 12 treatments a year. And it, depending on the membership, depends on how many of my signature treatments they get and how many of uh, my uh, maintenance treatments they get. Um, give me a week. And my website will be updated with all my new memberships. There is a membership portion on my website right now, but we're correcting that. You can have a look now and it'll give you a sort of an indication of how it looks. But in a week, it's going to look even better, my membership portion of my uh, website. Quick question, Nathan, before we break out. Uh, yeah. Do you tell them the pricing over the phone or you don't when they call? Yeah, so that's a really hard one. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But There's like, a lot of price shoppers around. So. Yeah, so what, what I will do is I'll say, look, the standard pricing for RF microneedling across the board in Ottawa is $800 a treatment. Right. But if you, if you come in for my membership, I can give you a lot more value than that $800 per treatment. So I suggest you come in and meet with either my nurse or myself. And nine times out of 10, patients come in asking for RF microneedling or IPL or whatever it is. And that's not the actual device we use on them because right. because that's not what's going to get them the best result for what they right. need. So I suggest you come in for a consult and let one of my professional staff tell you what you need because we're professionals when it comes to skin health. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just, just on that team, if you found this valuable today, it's a lot to get in in one hour. I'm happy to work with Graydon to do some um, other presentations in pr months send him some feedback on like the topics that you would like me to talk about because every single point I talked about today, I could talk for a day about. So um, I'm a huge collaborator in this industry. I love educating. I love hearing your ideas. Um, and I love helping. Um, I love helping clinics grow because this industry is amazing. I love it. And I'm so passionate about it. And I feel like this is my way to give back to this industry that gives me so much. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nathan. Yeah. If anyone has any ideas or any requests for things they want to discuss in detail, uh, specifically when it comes to sales, like whether you want to go deeper into the consultation or the clinic setup or like Nathan's super, you know, knowledgeable in all parts of running a clinic. So if you have anything that you want to um, discuss, um, yeah, you can just send me a message in school or message it to Anna, just anyone from our team message it. Um, and we'll take that into account. We can, we can definitely do some more master classes. Yes. Yeah, even if it's a if it's a chance in a month's time that I just jump on and it's just a questions and answers, I don't even need to present. You guys can come on with your own questions. I'm happy to do like an online forum like that as well. Cool. Cool. And I posted the revenue doctors in the chat. So if you want to check it out, just click the link there in the chat. And he's got like a number of different options. Like he does consulting and he also has the academy as well. So everyone check out that if they want um, more access to Nathan and his team and to learn more. Cheers, guys. I'll let you guys all have a great week. Sell, sell, sell. Make lots of money and great results for patients. Let's do it. Thank Cheers. you so much, Nathan. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.